What's up guys, this is HDD Recovery Services. Sorry, my face is not in the shot. What's up guys, this is HDD Recovery Services. Today I'll show you the steps um, that you can take to figure out uh, the condition of the printed circuit board and if there's any way to perform the repair well I'll explain how that can be done. I have a 3 terabyte uh, Seagate Barracuda drive that was mailed in and um, even though the drive was opened I think the client just rushed in and uh, watched a bunch of videos on YouTube without really making a clear assumption of what's going on and they just opened it up to have a look at what is in, on the inside. Hopefully it's not gonna harm the drive further but we will have to test it uh, we will have to have a look at the condition of filters heads and the uh, surface of the discs uh, but the drive um, doesn't spin up so we're gonna test the board so to take the board apart uh, from this device we're gonna have to use a t6 by 60 screwdriver to undo the bolts that are on the back so once uh, all the six screws are out, I'm going to have a look at the back of the PCB. So if the wrong power supply was plugged into the device and the unit stopped working, chances are you fried the board. And that's exactly what's in the notes for this case. A couple of things I want to pay attention to is just uh, look and inspect the board visually. If you don't have access to a microscope just try to get as close to it as possible first thing you should always do on any hard drive if you see that these um, pins for the preamplifier are corroded uh, take something like a rate like an eraser and just brush them up that cleans them up really well I don't know if you guys would be able to see this but they're all nice and shiny now right here that helped it out a lot um, the next thing is you're gonna need um, a multimeter that has a ability to test diodes for a continuity continuity test is this logo right here there so if the contacts are shorted out, it's gonna make the sound, okay? But if they're not, they're not making any sound. So what we have to find here is the uh, diodes for the device. Usually they will be uh, um, somewhere near the power connector of the board. So we have two of them. and they are directional they will have the line and uh, on some cases they'll have like an or arrow pointing um, to one side that's where the, where the line is and where the arrow would go that's where you would put your black probe okay so you can see that this diode is shorted out it's not supposed to be making the sound but it is making the sound now same thing we're gonna have to do for the second diode and the second diode is not shorted and it gives us the reading of 0 0.574 I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, diode right now and we're gonna check the continuity uh, just on the pads without the unit here some people say that you can just you know rip it out but by ripping it off the board we have a potential risk of damaging the pads and then if we damage the pads we might not be able to test them uh, not that it would really matter at this point but I do have tools to remove these things it's very simple so now as you can see up here this pad is empty I just removed the diet from there even though the data is removed, we still have to check continuity the exact same way. So um, one probe goes on one pad and another probe goes on the another pad. 
And now, we're actually getting a reading of 0 0.666. That's exactly what I was hoping for, because now I'm going to put this board back on the device. And now we have to attach all of the screws. The worst thing that I would want for this case to happen is we're going to get it spinning and the heads will crash because there's something contaminated on the inside and we can't get any more information out until the heads are replaced. So in order to avoid that, I'm just going to do a quick inspection and if everything checks out, I'll power it on for you guys and you'll see me accessing sectors on this unit. All right, so this is a moment of truth. I got uh, this drive checked out, three terabyte as you can see. Uh, I have a target drive connected to this channel number one. It's not in the shot, but I can move it over here. It's already running. Both of these drives are three terabyte because we are making a sector by sector image of this device. I am now going to connect uh, power to the channel number three where our Seagate drive is sitting. So it made the calibration sounds. It still sits in a busy mode. And I'm wondering if it... There you go. Now it gave us ready signal. And it gives access to the utility. This is what the uh, tool shows. So that calculation for head map um, reveals that this drive has six heads total and uh, individual performance can be monitored during the um, imaging process itself because once we've calculated uh, which heads belong uh, to which sectors up here as it displays the sector it actually gives us uh, in the brackets it tells us head 2 or head 1 is in use and then we can see if individual head has a repeating pattern that reveals that it's slowing down so right now I just captured the entire uh, M HFS catalog and uh, gonna go back here and I'm going to select scan catalog file now it's gonna take its time and scan through this catalog file um, once it's scanned gives us the structure we just select which files we need to target an image and that way it just speeds things up because we don't have to image the entire three terabyte drive which may take several hours if uh, not days in case of uh, really degrading hard drive uh, but we will actually be targeting the data so if, for example if the client had 40 gigs of data and they don't care about everything else that's on there uh, that's all we're gonna have to spend time imaging that 40 gigs of actual needed information uh, that's how the process works mainly uh, the problem with this drive is on head 5 so if I show you when the drive is engaged it is reading really slowly see how slow this head is engaging it's reading but it's reading with a lot of delays so my um, gut tells me to turn it off for now mainly mainly uh, this is happening because the customer previously opened up his drive or her drive um, at home which is highly uh, not recommended because the top surface is actually head 5 because it starts with 0 and the zero head number 0 is at the very very beginning of the device so it goes head 0 then head 1 head 2 head 3 head 4 and then the top level is head 5 so um, whatever had settled on top level is now preventing this head from reading fast something might have gotten underneath it um, 
and contaminated it slightly so the signal is not coming through properly anymore and uh, therefore it takes a really long time to read it. Chances are uh, that head will die during the imaging process, but primarily I'm looking at the uh, selection of the information that they requested and it's mainly photos. So my guess is that there's going to be a lot of uh, healthy recovered photos, but that may come at the price tag of one head being missing from the recovery. I don't know how long that head will last for, but it will last for a certain amount of time. We'll try to figure out what the optimal reading pattern for that would be. Maybe it will read better in some sections of the drive. Maybe it will read better at the end. Maybe it will read better at the beginning. But overall, the recovery is about 500 gigs as opposed to three terabytes, which is, I find is, it's a lot, but it's doable. And, uh, and there should be pretty good outcome towards this. And I'm gonna stop this video right here because that's as far as I'm gonna take it. Really now we we'll just have to monitor the process, make sure that it runs well without any hiccups and uh, transfer the data after the image is finished to external drive and send it back to the client. Thank you guys for watching. Hit like if you liked it and uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because this is all we demonstrate is data recovery procedures on all sorts of media. Uh, flash drives, memory cards, hard drives, RAID arrays, everything that has information on it in digital format, we recover. I guess that's it. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.